Hi guys, so today I'm going to talk about a subject that I really love, I can tend to go a little overboard with, um, but that is marketing materials. And um, basically it is mostly for people, you know, you have your business name, you are ready to start selling dolls, and you're not quite sure what you need, what you want to put your own personal stamp with every doll that you sell. Um, when I first started selling, I tried looking at, you know, other artists, seeing what they included besides just business cards, how it was laid out, and it was really difficult to find. So I thought maybe I could help somebody out. So this is a basic folder that goes out with all of my babies. Um, I have my logo, um, sticker on the front of the folder. Um, inside the folder I have reborn care instructions. I have a few little cards in here that I will um, show you guys. I have a business card. I have an artist COA. I have the sculptor COA and I always put my own business card in that. Um, I also include a photo book and I usually get either a soft cover one like that or sometimes I will also get a better you know a hardcover basically the more expensive the baby the nicer the book so let me start going let me start going through um, the stuff that's inside of my folder all right so I have a few things. The first thing is I have a custom thank you card and I'll put usually a little personal note here. If I know the collector, um, I'll sign my name sometimes. It kind of depends on who I'm selling to, what I write down here. Um, I do update these every so often. I actually update both of these. I just updated this one. I have not updated this one, so you'll see that a couple of the pictures are the same. Um, this is like an extended business card um, type. Um, I have, I always put four pictures, whatever are my favorite babies at the time. Like I said, I try to update it like once a year so the pictures change so that repeat customers um, that are getting this over and over, they can see new work that I've created since last time they ordered from me and they don't have a bunch that have the same thing. Um, as far as the wording goes, I want them to know, you know, how I how much time and everything that I put into it, how important quality is to me, um, what type of materials I use. I only work with authentic kits. And just that I do all this stuff because I want to make sure that their baby is as high quality as it can be. I have a QR code that goes to my website. Um, I have my website. I have my social media name so that they can find me on social media. And I also have my business card. I just used a details photo that I really loved with my logo. Um, if you're putting a picture on your business card, you want to make sure it is the best quality one that you have. Um, my business card, I just scribbled this out. Normally it is not scribbled out, but I didn't want everyone on YouTube to have my phone number. Um, but I have my logo QR code to go to my website, my name, a web address, email address, and then again, my social media is my name's where to find me. And a good point on phone numbers, if you have not already done this when setting up your business, um, if you want to like look towards the future, um, I don't give out my actual cell phone number. Um, what I have on my business cards um, is a Google Voice uh, phone number. And um, that way it's, it's just so much easier to keep one phone number for business um, you know, for your personal privacy, basically, um, so that you're not getting reborn related calls on your personal line. And it might not be an issue for you yet, but the more cards you send out, the more potential that is. So I like knowing anything that rings in from this number. I know 
that it's either a reborn related friend, a customer, something reborn related. Um, I have these little cards and I actually don't put this in my folder, um, but this is mohair instructions. Um, I also have these printed on little stickers that I put my mohair conditioner in. I also put this card in a little organza bag with a little small toothbrush and a mascara wand um, just so they know how to use the product that I'm sending. And again, you'll see I have my logo on everything. Um, I have this little instruction card just about staining um, from dark clothing. Um, I'll put this in my folder and then also like I try really hard any clothing that I send with a baby. I try to only send whites, creams, beiges, light grays, colors that would not stain vinyl. But if I find something really awesome and it's like a blue or something, um, you know, I'll fold up the clothes to wrap it up and I'll stick this right on top <clears throat> before I wrap it so that when they open that, they know, oh, this one needs to be washed several times or it could stain my baby. I have my reborn care instructions and I went over these in depth in a member's video um, for anybody who needs help with creating reborn care instructions that is available for members. Um, but I just, you know, I have my highlight points there, as you can see. It just basically stuff you want them to know how to prevent any damage to their expensive baby that they just uh, purchased, you know, how to protect their investment. Um, I personally have an artist COA. I know uh, some people do birth certificates instead. Um, I really like these. I created this myself. Um, I number them. This is actually the number baby that I'm on. Uh, well, I'll be on with my next one. I started numbering them. Believe it or not, my first one was 001. And I print these out like 50 at a time. And then when I start to get low, I'll print more. And I number them all right when I print them so that I don't lose track of my numbers. Um, but I'll put whatever the name of the kit is. The kit's name plus number you know, 10 of a thousand, whatever the COA number is, the sculptor's name, um, the material, whether the baby is vinyl or silicone, if it comes with a, a belly plate, a cloth body or cuddle body, I'll just circle those. Um, the medium is obvious. It's what type of paint I'm using. Um, I used to use air dry. I don't anymore, but I left it on there in case there was a situation where I did use it. Um, and I have Exodus and Irresistibles on there in case I use one of those to paint. Um, the finish, I'll circle if it's matte, if it's satin, or if it's a good, you know, a textured finish. And what type of varnish that I use. Um, these right here are very, very important for me to document. Um, I can't even count how many times I see... A collector posting that their baby was damaged that they needed some, you know to be revarnished and they don't have any idea what kind of paint was used what kind of varnish so they don't know what they can safely use over it so that's really important and then on this side I have whatever type of weighting material I used um, usually ultra fine glass beads or plastisol what I used to fill it with, um, and again, I just circle whatever I used. I type put in, I don't put their address or phone number for privacy reasons. They can fill that in if they want to, but I'll usually just put the name, the amount, and the date of, you know, who I sold it to. Um, I have this on the back, so if they resell it later, um, they could put the date, the person's name, how much they sold it for, and so this just kind of keeps a record, um, like I said, if somebody needs to, you know, fix something later, they need to know what materials were used on it. Um, it also really helps if somebody has like tampered, you know, say someone adds kitty litter to it and sells it. They can see that it originally came with this. It's not as it was originally. Um, I do need to update these because I need to add a place for hair, whether it's rooted, what type, that type of thing. But, um... 
Yeah, I keep I keep saying that, but I haven't done it. Um, I do have a verification number here. This is a scratch off sticker. Um, so if they got this and it's probably overkill, um, but just, you know, if they got this and they were questioning the authenticity of the kit or if someone really bought it for me, I log this number, they could scratch it off. They could call me or email me this number and I could say, yes, this number goes with this COA. Um, on these. I have an embosser that I emboss all my little um, certificate stickers. They just have my business name and that kind of stuff. I just like them. They look nicer. Um, it's just a nice way to add a little extra touch to it. Um, I have uh, a lot of stickers that have my logo and business name on them. These ones I usually use on my folders. These I use on the outside of my boxes or for other things. Um, I do make my own onesies with my logo on them. Um, I try to use high quality onesies. These are Burt's Bees Baby, which are my absolute favorite. Um, but I get uh, these iron-ons. Um, I get them from Paula at Perfect For You Prints. You could find her on Facebook. And they are pretty affordable. I think they are, I think they're like $3 each or something. So I get the um, the transfers, put them on, iron them on, and I have a great little logo onesie. I'm not sure, honestly, I don't know how, many, how much customers actually leave that use this after they get it. But I do have people always comment that they like them. So I keep doing them and keep sending them. I just think it's a nice extra little touch and that's really what all this stuff is about um you want like almost every single thing that you send with the baby you want your business name you want your logo all over the place you don't want them to forget that you made that baby well I should say if you're proud of your work hopefully you don't want them to <laughs> I'm just kidding but hopefully you don't want them to forget who made that baby um and I used to go really, really crazy when I first started. I had like pens and magnets and cups and I mean overboard. Um, and then I really tried to kind of scale down and do higher quality things and more like what do people actually need? The most important part for me is definitely their packet. When they open it, I want all of my paperwork to look good. I want my printing on everything to be professional and to look good. Um, I do print these ones at home. I have a laser printer so I have like nice you know shiny paper with shiny laser ink and everything looks nice. These um, kind of things all of my business cards and stickers and other little cards um, all this stuff I have printed at Vistaprint which is pretty affordable and you can see the the print quality is really nice um i do have like some additional stuff for if i go to like doll shows um i have big banners i have portfolios and i pretty much make a new portfolio every year just um examples of my work um so I usually bring my most recent one or ones with, you know, favorite babies. I definitely don't bring my first portfolios anywhere anymore. But I'm just uh, trying to look really quick. I think that's it. That is all of my, um, that's all my stuff that I have. But like I said, the most important thing is you want your logo and you want your name to, you want them to remember you, to remember where they bought their baby later on down the road if they resell it um, and you just want to get your name out there as much as you can so everything that can have your logo should have your logo when you send it out um, if you haven't picked a name and business name yet um, the most important thing about that is to make sure that you search you know, search Google, search GoDaddy to see if the web address is taken, but also search Facebook. Um, you want to make sure that you are not stealing someone's name 
or having a name that is too close to somebody else's. Like if there's an artist, you know, Cuddly Reborns, you don't want to be Reborns Cuddly Nursery or something like that. You want to search in reverse just to be respectful of other artists. There are artists who do get very, very upset if people pick a name that's too close to theirs. So try to avoid that. I'll tell you a funny story with my name. I actually had no idea what to name my business. I was looking at like Emily's creations. Then there's, um, you know, there's a really popular one named Emily's Dream Babies. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to put you something with Emily. And my husband was like, you don't make reborns, you make eborns. Because my name's, you know, starts with an E, both first and last name. Um, but so it was kind of a joke, like eborns, like you're painting eborns instead of reborns. And I was like, that's pretty witty. I'm just going to keep that. And so I just made my own little logo. There are obviously services, um, like, play, you know, if you're not a, a creative thinker when the, for this types of stuff, there are like apps and things that can help you come up with something. But um but yeah, the most important thing I would say is keep it short. You want people to be able to remember it. Um, if you do get your own website, keep that short so that people can remember it. I really wanted um, mine to be without the dash, even though I have it have the dash in all of my stuff. But I could not buy that site. It was taken and um, it was not available for sale. Um, so you want to make sure, even if you don't have a website right now, if you're not planning on making your own website, you want to make sure your business name, if people do Google your business name, that it's not going to be going to somewhere else. You don't want to confuse customers down the road as you grow. So, all right, guys, I think, um, oh wait, that's not it. Okay. So there's all this stuff that you can do, right? And this is a scaled down version. I should have done this video five years ago. You guys would have been like, oh my God. Okay, so what's important? Like out of this stuff, if you're just starting and you don't have a ton of money to get all this stuff, like what is the most important thing for you to have? This right here. A business card is the most important thing to have. That reborn care instructions hundred percent and a thank you card you don't need a custom nice printed thank you card you can get a little box of hallmark thank you cards or blank note cards but if somebody is investing in you as an artist by buying their baby you want to you want them to know that you appreciate their business and that you're happy that they got a baby from you so you definitely want to do a thank you card um, these are really nice to have. I think it's great for customers to have all of the information, but I have actually never seen another artist that sends an artist COA. They always send just a birth certificate that pretty much just has like the kit name, sculptor name, artist name, height, weight, date, signature, that's it. Um, but I think these are great. I wish more artists did them and then more less collectors would have issues trying to figure out what was used on their babies later on. So if you can make something like this, obviously I printed these myself. It was just, you know, typing it out and getting some little stickers. Um, it's not that much work though. And I would say like a basic pack. This is great. If you don't want to do these, definitely care instructions, business card, thank you card. But all of these other things are just really nice touches that are going to help you stand out in a customer's mind. Um, obviously, the most important thing is your work. If you send somebody a baby that is not well done with all this great stuff, they're not going to buy from you again. But if you send them a nice baby and you have all this other stuff, they really, and I've, I know this because I've gotten feedback from customers, but they really think you're very professional. Like they, all of my customers give me great feedback about it. That's just all the little touches. They, you know, you look more like a real business. And I think that is really important. That's important to me anyways, having an art driven business. 
that they know that I am still at business. All right, guys, now that is it. And I will see you guys in the next one. If you have any questions, let me know.